Thank you. 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 Thank you.
They were struggling with mental health. They were struggling with poverty. And the criminal justice system wasn't the way to deal with their problems. And we see that in Canada, we've got an opioid crisis. Thousands of Canadians are dying. And we've got to do things differently. We can't continue down the same path if we want to change the results. We've got to change our, our approach. And so what our approach is this. When people are, are struggling with addiction for personal use, and when people are struggling with mental health and people are struggling with poverty, they shouldn't be treated with the criminal justice system. They should be treated with compassion and care with the health care response. And that's what I'm committed to doing, making sure people who are in need, people who are addicted, people who are dealing with mental health, get mental health services, get addiction services. That is the way that we help people out and the way we save lives. Bonjour, Monsieur Singh. Christian Noël de Radio-Canada. Oui. À propos de l'aide médicale à mourir, euh, les tribunaux jugent que les critères sont euh, trop serrés, notamment concernant la mort raisonnablement prévisible. Est-ce que vous souhaiteriez euh, un, un assouplissement des règles et pourquoi? Euh, oui, euh, ce qu'on a vu, c'est qu'il y a un manque euh, sur les critères. Ils sont euh, trop euh, précises. Euh, en fait, ils sont trop, euh, trop spécifiques et ça n'inclut pas toutes les situations qui arrivent. Avec les résultats dans la Cour de justice au Québec, ça montre qu'il y a vraiment un problème avec la réglementation qui existe à ce moment. Donc oui, je suis tellement ouvert à, à s'assurer que chacun qui a besoin de ce service peut avoir accès, accès à cette décision. C'est tellement important pour la dignité. Et ce qu'on a vu à ce moment jusqu'à jusqu ça, euh, le gouvernement libéraux, en fait, ils n'ont ils pas fait le travail qu'il faut faire. Et on, on, je suis prêt d'avoir de, de une plus grande conversation, d'augmenter de, de l'accès au cette service. Uh, so the question was around, um, right now, the access to, to folks who need medical assistance in, in dying. Uh, there's been concerns, a court decision that found that the criteria were too specific, too narrow. Um, and I understand that that's a reality. Uh, people who need to make this choice for their dignity should be able to make the choice. And right now, the criteria being too narrow doesn't allow access to this decision for a lot of people. And so I'm open to looking at ways to making sure the access is improved and that we do it in a way that respects the dignity of someone to make that choice. C'est votre premier débat comme chef ce soir. Uh, D'abord, est-ce qu'il y a un truc que quelqu'un proche de vous vous a donné pour vous aider? Et quel est... Comment est-ce que vous allez mesurer votre succès ce soir au débat? Donc, uh, dans les débats, uh, ce que je vais faire, c'est de toujours uh, partager les histoires des gens, de monsieur et madame tout le monde. Mon travail, c'est d'être une voix pour les gens, des voix pour les gens qui n'ont pas une voix. Et je vais utiliser ma plateforme toujours de montrer ce qui se passe avec le, la vie de la population et comment on peut aider les gens. Donc, euh, le truc, c'est ça, de toujours mettre au cœur ce que j'ai toujours fait, de les gens, monsieur, madame, tout le monde, avec, pour lesquels je, je me bats, euh, c'est eux euh, pour lesquels je suis ici. Et je vais continuer de faire ça. Mr. Singh, Mike Lugutur from Global National. There's a vigorous debate now going around on e-cigarettes. Do you think um, that Canada should be doing something to ban vaping? Well, I mean, all our decision when it comes to, to any sort of a product that's in the market should be based on evidence and should be based on the science. And if we have some science and evidence that point to a problem, then we should respond. And, and right now, that science is, is unclear. There are some concerns being raised, and I think we should be very careful to assess any sort of information that we have and make the best decision possible to protect citizens. And, and that includes uh, vaping, e-cigarettes, and anything else that might arise in terms of information that we now have that should inform our decisions. We already have some jurisdictions, and, and I know more recently, the President of the United States is looking at it, you know, flavored uh, nicotine and that sort of thing. Would you, if, if you were Prime Minister, consider a nationwide ban on e-cigarettes? Uh, what my concern would be is, uh, you know, as someone who <laughs> doesn't smoke or drink, I, I really want to encourage people to make healthy decisions. I'm particularly worried about young people that might be influenced to get into a, into a practice that they think is safe when it's really detrimental to, the, to their health. Uh, I want us to make good decisions and good policies that protect the safety and the health of Canadians. And so everything we should do, everything we do should be with that focus in mind. And if there is a there is a way to move forward which discourages young people from making a bad decision, I want to do that. If there is information that we can provide to help people make a better decision towards their health, I want to do that. Mr. Singh, Kevin Gallagher, CTV yes. uh, News. So we know that yesterday two NDP candidates had to step down for various reasons. 
There's been lots of reports about uh, difficulty that your party's had to vet, recruit candidates. Uh, Sid Ryan called the process unprofessional. Um, how can Canadians vote for you for prime minister if it seems you're having trouble organizing candidates for this upcoming election? Well, I want to be clear, we're going to have uh, all the candidates in place uh, so that everyone in Canada can vote for a new Democrat no matter where they live. Um, there's people that have to stand up, li live up to our standards. As soon as information arises where they are not meeting the standards that we believe is important for our candidates to meet, we then uh, move ahead to ensure that they're no longer candidates. And that's what happened uh, recently, and we're going to continue to do that. If any information arises which makes us doubt the quality of a candidate, we're then going to move to say that those, those folks can no longer be candidates. Uh, I'm confident that people can trust us to know that we're making good decisions about the candidates we have. There is a high quality standard that we're trying to achieve, but more importantly, we're also trying our best to recruit uh, the real representation of Canada. We haven't seen enough marginalized communities represented. We haven't seen enough women particularly represented in politics. So I'm working hard to make sure that our candidates reflect Canada. And that's a tough thing to do, but a very important thing to do. But at what point do you have to strike a balance here to get a candidate in the riding before September 30th cutoff, right? So is there an issue with the vetting process in the, in the party? What, what's holding you back here? No, not at all. I mean, we've got a, a strong process. Uh, I've just put in place some, some sort of strict, uh, rigid demands. I really want to encourage uh, equity-seeking folks to be reflected. I really believe it's important to, to change the way things have been done in the past. I want to do things differently, and that's hard to do, I know, but it's important for me, and so I'm really committed to making sure we have the most diverse list of candidates possible, people that really reflect who we are as Canadians, and particularly for me, a big emphasis is working hard on recruiting as many women as possible. That's important. It's hard. I know many people who are so qualified don't see themselves reflected in politics and then don't want to run. I really want to encourage them to run. It's important for me. And that's why I'm working hard. You just mentioned at the oh hi. You just mentioned hi. at the top there that you hi, put in the high stricter, rigid demands. Um, when though do you have to cut your losses so you get the 338? Well, I'm I'm an optimist. I believe we can always fight to make things better. I don't want to ever give up. So I'm I'm committed to the vision of making sure we've got a, a candidates and uh, that re represent Canada, that represent who we are. So it's tough work, but it's important work, and I'm I'm happy and proud that we're doing it, and we're going to continue to make sure that we've got. Uh, the best list of candidates possible for people to choose from. But uh, rest assured that by uh, election day, everyone in Canada can vote for a new Democrat no matter where they live. I want to ask you about tonight. This is your first official debate in a campaign as leader. So what are you personally thinking? What do you think are going to be your challenges in this? Uh, I'm really excited and I'm looking forward to it. One big challenge is Mr. Trudeau hasn't shown up for four years and he's not showing up to this debate. I'm really disappointed by that. I think Canadians are disappointed. They expect that the Prime Minister should be able to stand up and respond to questions, hold up and, and defend his record. His record is pretty abysmal, but that doesn't mean he should give up on the debate. So that's going to be one of our challenges. How do we debate the Prime Minister who's responsible for many of the outcomes that we've seen over the past four years when he's not present? But we're still going to move ahead, of course, and we're going to make sure people know where we stand. And I'm going to take the opportunity to share the stories that I hear from people across this beautiful country. Hi, Mr. Singh. Brian Platt uh, with Post Media. You mentioned off the top the Liberals have every seat in Brampton right now. That's right. This is an area you've won provincially and you almost won federally in 2011. What do you have to do to win here in this election? Well, we just have to look back and point out what uh, Liberals have failed to do over the past four years. Uh, right here, we're at Brampton Civic Hospital, and with five Liberal MPs, they have failed to improve the health care conditions here in, in Brampton. It's one of the biggest concerns. When you speak to people in Brampton, their concern is, is the hospital. The people who are, way, who are standing in this line right now, this is really important for them, that we have a hospital that, that serves the needs of the, of the community. This is one of the fastest growing communities in Canada. It is underserved. And the five Liberal MPs have failed the people of this, of this city. We're going to show them that you don't have to accept bad or worse with Conservatives who are going to cut services even more, that they've got a real choice with New Democrats who are going to invest in building a new hospital. We're going to invest in expanding our health care, making sure that medication is covered for all. These are things that are really appealed to the people of Brampton, and I'm confident that they're going to see in us a real champion for them someone who's going to fight for them, someone who's going to be on their side, because it's really clear we're in it for people. 
and they're going to see that. Um, also sticking in Brampton, the issue of public safety is a big deal here as well. I'd like to know what plans you have for public safety improvements in Brampton as well, particularly with Peel Regional Police. Certainly, uh, public safety is a concern that, that impacts people uh, across, across Canada. Uh, when we've spoken with, with people who are particularly concerned about public safety, uh, we're worried about young people and young people who end up in a, going down the wrong path. Uh, there's concerns around young people who don't see a bright future, don't see uh, hope, and they end up going in, mixing up in the wrong crowd, and then it creates a spiral. So from speaking to people who are, who are experts in the field, people in the community, people that I've spoken to, they want to make sure young people have bright, promising futures, and that means making sure we've got the programs for them, making sure we make the right investments so that young people can see a bright future. They can get a job, they can own a home, that they don't have to resort to some of the negative decisions that sometimes the pressures around them encourage. Uh, we are confident that with our plan to build affordable housing, our plan to create 300,000 new quality jobs to tackle climate crisis, and, and our plan to improve health care will create the climate and the conditions to improve public safety, but also just the quality of life for everyone in our country, but particularly here in Brampton. Absolutely. We've got to invest uh, federal money in, in youth education, youth services, youth programs. We want kids to have access to fitness programs. We want people to be uh, healthy and active. And we want to encourage uh, positive and bright futures that we know are possible if we make the right choices. And that's what we're committed to doing. Yes. Hello, sir. Karan Ghuman from Hamdard Media. Uh, so Gaji. federal government can provide funding for the hospital to the Brampton as you can, uh, as you have made an announcement for the new uh, Brampton hospital. Uh, but how you will make sure that the provincial government will uh, not uh, put their nose in this matter? As we all know, if you uh, MPs will get elected, and uh, how the benefits will be uh, given to the Brampton? Uh, it's a really good question. It's going to be difficult to work with uh, a conservative prim uh, premier who has not made healthcare a priority and instead has been cutting services. That is gonna be a challenge. But what I'm committed to doing right now is just because it's a challenge doesn't mean we give up. New Democrats don't give up on people. We're in it for people. And that means that we're gonna fight hard. We're gonna say, this is important. Here is the funding. We are ready to put money on the table to make sure we build this hospital. We have to work with the provincial government, that's true. But if we show the courage, we show the conviction, we show that we're ready, and we've got money available on the table to make this a reality, I can't see why a premier would say no to that especially when the people need it so desperately. Uh, so, this is Justine from PDC Punjabi. Uh, my question to you is in Punjabi. So, this is a new campaign, a fresh campaign, first campaign. How do you convince people to convince people to vote for the NDP? Yes, it's a lot of money. First of all, we've seen in the past four years that Liberal MP, all the Brampton MP Liberal, they have given the opportunity to give Brampton to Brampton. Brampton is a big problem in Brampton. We are standing in front of Brampton Civic Hospital. We know that there will be a common thing in the hallway of medicine. We don't want to change this common thing. We want to change it. So the main thing is that we want to change it. We want to choose the NDP and the NDP. We want to change it. 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 पेश करांगे ताकि आप नमः हॉस्पिटल बना मांगे आप पील मेमोरियल में एक्सपेंड करना चाहने हैं नाल दे नाल जो आपने दवाइयां तक खर्चा आप चाहने हैं कि जे किसे न्यू दवाई दी लोड होवे वो आपना हेल्थ कार्ड बाते ना के कोई क्रेडिट कार्ड आप ए सेट सवामंद वेच्चे होर फाइनेंसिंग करांगे एक नमः प्रोग्राम ए गल्ला देना लोकन को पूरा ये उम्मीद होना चाहिए था कि आप ओ देना ला आप लोकन देना ला ना कि वर्डे जड़े मीरां वास्ते काम करना आप आम लोग का वास्ते काम करना थैंक यू सेम क्वेश्चन शर्ट क्वेश्चन वाज ऑन हाउ कैन आई कन्विंस द पीपल ऑफ ब्रैम्पटन to vote for New Democrats when they voted for Liberals in the past. And I said, well, let's just look at the past four years. The past four years have shown that Liberal MPs, all of which who represent Brampton, have failed the people of Brampton. They failed making sure that health care, which is one of the biggest concerns for Brampton, has not been addressed. They failed to address that problem. And so what we're committing today is saying that, you know, you don't need to choose between Liberals or Conservatives. Conservatives who are going to cut to make things worse and Liberals 
who are going to take you for granted. We're saying that you can choose new Democrats who are going to fight for you. We're in it for you because we believe you deserve equal and adequate funding. Uh, that means building the additional hospital here in Brampton, a city that is as fast growing as Brampton deserves the right type of funding. And that means also expanding Peel Memorial. We also believe in making sure we've got medication coverage for all by 2020. That's something that's going to significantly improve the, the conditions in the hospital, but for people's lives in general. People can count on us. We'll be there for them. So why are you promising to build a hospital in one community when hallway health care does uh, appear to be a problem for all across Canada? I guess why are you spending this, this morning talking about one specific community when this issue is, is all across Canada? It, the issue is truly across Canada, but if we look at hallway medicine, it's really here in Brampton Civic where it's at a real crisis level. I mentioned in 2017 a report showed it's literally 4,352 people were treated in hallways. That's a number that far exceeds anywhere else in Canada. It's one of the highest numbers for hallway medicine. It's a crisis level here. And what we're saying is we're committed to providing the funding to address this crisis. There's a crisis in Brampton and it's been neglected and that's not gonna stand with New, Dem New Democrats. We believe that's wrong. We're also talking about a broader solution. With uh, Pharmacare for All by 2020, that's gonna alleviate a lot of pressures off of hospitals across Canada. Many people end up in the emergency room because they couldn't afford the medication that would have kept them well in the first place. That's creating a burden on the hospital system. That's uh, a lot of waste because people who could have treated their illness end up in a $1,500 a day bed in an emergency room. It could have been avoided. That's why our plan is to tackle this crisis here in Brampton, but also the crisis broadly speaking across Canada. Uh, what are your plans for the Canada health transfer? Do you plan to increase it or keep that current levels? Uh, great question. Um, I really want to point this out that Harper, Mr. Harper, put in place a, a cut of $30 billion. That's what his plan was, to cut health care transfers by $30 billion. Now, he made the plan, but he didn't actually put it in place. It was Mr. Trudeau who put in place his $30 billion cut. Uh, and Mr. Shear's talking about keeping it in place. We're saying that that is wrong. We need to actually increase investments in health care. The health care transfers used to be 50-50 between provinces and the federal government. Now they've dropped to 25% approximately at the federal level and 75% at the provincial level. That is wrong and that's a lot of the reason why healthcare is in such a dismal condition right now. We want to change that. Thank you very much everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We're just going to shake hands with these good folks.